when I go into schools, what I see is a sea of heads, hundreds and hundreds of kids roaming the hallways without any clear idea in their mind what they're doing and why they're doing this. They're going to get an education because it's their job, but they really don't see in that job what it does for them or does for anybody, and that whatever it is they're doing it for, it's not because it gives them a sense of purpose and meaning in life. They're afraid of ridicule, they're afraid of being picked on, they're afraid of not being approved of, they're afraid of failing, they're afraid of their parents getting upset with them, they're afraid of looking stupid. They don't know how to get attention. They don't know how to matter. They don't know how to set themselves apart from anyone else by what they're doing in any way that would distinguish them as someone that matters to anyone. There's about 40 million teenagers, adolescents in this country. One out of five of them at least have a diagnosable mental disorder. At most, only one third of those kids are actually being identified. Some people believe that only one out of five are being identified. So, of all those kids that aren't being identified, they're at risk. And the consequences of this um, start to show up in school failure, school dropout, conduct, oppositional defiant behavior, entanglements with law enforcement, substance abuse. That's where these things go if these kids don't get help. And the first step is for the parents to understand when there may be a problem and to become involved. I believe that many parents don't really know how much their children are suffering. And the only way they're going to be able to help their child is to have an awareness of all the things that can be going on with kids and be able to talk with somebody about what does this mean. And that's the purpose of screening. The purpose of screening is not to diagnose a child. It's to help a parent become more aware of what's going on in that child's life. And to understand that if things are getting worse for that child, or treatment isn't working, or medication isn't working, when can they say, this isn't okay to do anymore? And I believe parents have not only a right, but the responsibility to seek out the care that they believe is appropriate and necessary. They need to be involved and invested in what comes next. To understand why children act the way they do, you must first observe their behavior, then study their secrets. Only then will you truly know what to do. Step one was designed to help parents to screen their children. Not to have a computer screen their child, but to, for them to screen their child. And the way step one does it is, it, first of all, it involves the parent in the screening because they're doing it. It also educates the parent because by completing these questionnaires, it actually sensitizes and makes parents aware of questions and behaviors that they may have never considered. And I believe it empowers parents because the screening process provides information and it provides guidance that allows parents to actually advocate, to seek out services for their child in which they have a tool, they have information that they can give someone and say, here, okay, this is based on what I see and know about my child. That's a very empowering thing for a parent to have. I think that the name is appropriate. Step one, do this evaluation on your children. What can you lose? It, you know, here is an opportunity to find out 
what what it is that you're seeing and and have it put into a, a format that's easy for you to understand uh, first glance you can look at the charts the graphs in it and see that you know maybe they're maybe they're really chronically depressed maybe they're extremely anxious um, maybe they don't internalize anything maybe everything is externalized it's really not it would be really nice to know those things and wouldn't it be nice if you had that first step it was your first step step one the solution is not to just medicate these kids we need to do more that's the first option you get if you get a small piece of the picture the kids depressed we should try an antidepressant and see if that helps so the kid is talked into taking the medication and if he's lucky he won't have insomnia nausea headaches diarrhea if you pick the right medication he won't be nearly as irritable and angry about his life or he won't be nearly as sad or depressed and instead of actually letting the world know how miserable he is and not listening to anybody who says you shouldn't feel that way, you give him a medication. If you give an angry, irritable, depressed child medication, in some cases their anger and irritability will get much worse, especially in the beginning, if it's going to get better at all. You can also give kids who are very depressed down, anxious, and suicidal, and you can give them medication. And then all of a sudden, they're going to feel very sedated, anxious, uncaring, and the idea of death is not so scary anymore. When you put a kid on an antidepressant and you give him a depression screening questionnaire, the symptoms of depression will start to go away. Okay, But w when the kid goes out and breaks into a building and gets drunk with his buddies, you're going to come back and say, what were you thinking? You know, how do you feel right now? And they look you in the eye and they say, I don't really care. I used to be angry and I used to be sad, but now I really don't care anymore. Well, you sit there and you wonder, well, what are we doing? Are we helping these kids? Medications without monitoring and therapy can be dangerous. At one of my appointments with the children's um, psychiatrist for a med check, I took the report in, and I also took a report from the child's school. The school report showed the incidents that he's been involved in and their escalation um, over the last part of the school year. And I gave that to the doctor first, and he looked at it and was prepared to uh, give us a prescription for um, a drug that would help him with his explosive outbursts and he also wanted him to um, have a baseline EKG for that before we started it but as he was writing out the prescriptions and orders for those things I asked him if he'd look at the evaluation that I'd gotten offline and um, I had printed it out for him and he said he would and as he studied it um, he started making some notes and things and when he was finished looking at that evaluation he chose a very different course. He, he did not uh, prescribe the medication for explosive outburst. He did not ask us to go ahead and get the baseline EKG. And he started decreasing and taking away some of the medications that he'd previously been on because the scales in the evaluation showed high levels of depression, anxiety, and suicidal tendencies. And um, he felt that those medications that the young man was taking were um, contributing to that so we actually took him off several different medications and didn't add that new one. Step one through the .NET framework on the internet is amazingly powerful. It can reach any parent anywhere in this country at any time when they're in distress and it can give them information that can save lives. I mean, we have the ability to reach every family in this country, either through a library or a friend who has a computer. We can reach every one of them, and we could screen every kid very quickly. You just set up a few servers around the country, you network them, you build this system in, and there it is. For a family who has a child and they're having problems, if they were to use 
the step one evaluation tool and come up with some information that they have in their hands, concrete, that they could share with a caseworker, with a supervisor, with a um, counselor, they would absolutely have the they'd have the, all the right tools in their hand. I believe that every child in this country should be screened by their parent in terms of their mental and emotional well-being. I think that's a parent's job. I think it's their right, and I think it's their responsibility. And I think that if you take that away from parents, you're going to do a tremendous disservice to children and to parents.